Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel and we are covering Mongoose ODM uh, with Express and Nest.js and in this particular video we are going to build a full stack application. Let's say first we'll talk about the APIs and here we are going to use uh, Express and the Mongoose. Mongoose is an ODM to talk to our MongoDB database. Okay, so I'm already covering, uh, I have already covered a couple of videos talking about the relationships and all. Now we are going to do the end-to-end -end practical example. And this example also also covers about the mean and the mern, like Mongo Express, Node.js, Angular, Mongo Express, Node.js, React. In both kind of stack, you will write Node.js as a backend, right? So with this video, we, you will also understand how you can build the, the backend system with the Node.js and MongoDB. You might not be aware about SQLize, Type ORM and other ORM which works with the relational database. You might be aware about just a MongoDB and you know a little bit Mongoose. Then this video is really helpful for you to learn and build the, the REST APIs using Express and the Mongoose. Okay, so let's quickly get started. We'll create a package.json and then we will install all the required packages. Okay, so here is our package.json and we'll start installing the packages one by one. First of all, what do we need? I will install a couple of them. So we need Express, we need Mongoose, we need Passport because we are going to have some kind of a login mechanism. We are we are building the ordering system food ordering apis where we are going to have a user restaurant uh, meals order all these different different entities we are going to have express jwt to validate the token body parser which is optional now because that is coming with uh, express only node mon to keep our application up and running with the code changes bcrypt.js to create an encrypted password because we are also going to write the, the user APIs uh, passport, passport, JWT, we'll keep installing whatever the packages these are the packages uh, I'm able to recall okay and what we will do is we will start uh, writing our application so this video is not particularly okay how to work with express how to build a server no I mean if you are watching this video, you already know how to create a Node.js HTTP REST API server and then maybe also how to write a MVC structure of the folders where you have a controller services and the routes for a simple express application. So simply what we are going to do is we can have a simple folder API and let's say another folder is a config where we can manage the config and another folder is test. You can also have a, you, you may have source folder instead of APIs. Okay, I created this test folder outside, that is fine. So this is our structure, right? And git ignore is required. Otherwise, you can see, uh, we can create a simple git ignore file. and default git ignore content for any javascript project okay now we'll start with simple server.js and here we are not using typescript it's a simple express.js with uh, mongoose so to, 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 so we have a server.js now what we will do is we will import express all the required modules uh, from the package.json so in the the package.json Let's install some other modules. So we installed Express Mongoose and all. So we need Bcrypt and then Express JWT. So we also need JSON Web Token because we are going to build a user authentication system, validator to validate the payload. Either you can use a class validator, validator, or JOI. These are different different modules. And if we are going to use Passport. For authentication, then passport JWT also we need for validating the tokens and all. And lot us. Maybe these different modules should be enough to work with simple express app. So primary primary modules are our express, mongoose, 
and uh, bcrypt js passport passport jwt and lodash okay so now we can start writing our server.js so we also going to use uh, so how we are going to manage the configurations like uh, how we are going to store the configurations so either you can use a dot env module for that like simple you can write dot env and and dot env dot config so it will pick your configurations from dot env uh, I think it should be like this dot env dot env cli if you have multiple environment or you can also use config module that config module picks the things from the default dot json file similarly like dot env is a module which picks things from dot env file okay so we can also have env dot example here we'll put all our things like let's say what do I have in you know for example i will have a mongo uri i will have a secret key for creating the token and user roles maybe some information like what all user roles we have in our system which is like user or or anything else you wanted to pass okay so this is a basic configuration setup what we will do is we can also install some dev dependency which contains okay if you want to do the testing then npm install minus minus save dev you can use install jest and i think jest should be enough for running the test cases I mean either you can use a mocha, should, super test, chai, all these things or you can just use simple jest and add some mocking library. So I'm just fine with jest. Just using that we can actually uh, write some test cases, uh, integration test cases, jest and the request module we need where we can hit the mock APIs and check the response status and all. Okay, these are the environment variables. Now we can start writing the server.ts. So it's a simple MVC style application in the express where you do what you do is you have a controllers, you have services and all these things. So what we can do is I can divide these things into multiple folders. Like I'm going to have a user. So all the user controller services and the routes will be there. Then another folder I have is the order. So we have these three different entities and models you can say and then restaurant okay so we have and also authentication we can create a simple folder because we are going to use password so these are the folders now inside user you can have user model user controller and index.js I mean you can use you can adopt any kind of uh, folder structure what you can do is you can have only controllers all the services all the models just three folders and inside three folders you can put like in the controller folder you can put user controller restaurant controller order controller meal controller or you can create different different folders for each and every model like let's say user so i can simply create is uh, index.js and then I can create a user controller. User controller.js. And I can also have a model inside it. All right. And it's going to work like this. So similarly, we can have a model here. I mean, everybody knows how to write an express app. I don't need to explain much. The important part is how we define the MongoDB models. How we define the relationship uh, of a user with an order a relationship of a restaurant with a meal meal collection so these are the four different collections user restaurant order and meal because the order while order should always have the information of a restaurant of a user of the meal items for that particular order the restaurant should always have information about his own information plus the meals that restaurant is providing the user will have basic information, username, password, email, just authentication information. And the meal is just like, okay, whatever the meal uh, that restaurant is providing. 
So like if you talk about the relationships, if you talk about the RDBMS database style, then you can think about the relationship structure, right? So user is going to order something, right? And so it is going to create a collection in the order. An order belongs to a user, but the order content belongs to a restaurant meals. Right, so what order contains? Order is not identified without a user, the owner, like who is ordering this item, plus meals with a restaurant. Right, a restaurant cannot be identified without meals. So restaurant is a collection. It should have some kind of relationship with the meals. So we have a restaurant, meals, I, it's not a complex collection structure we have just like we just need to identify the relationships and apply them so now we can start defining the models uh, so this is our dot env and this is our server dot js so first thing we will import all the configurations in the process dot env so that everywhere we can use process dot env dot mongodb uri a secret key or something like that okay so this is our server dot js we will require we will require all the required modules let's say const express i mean these are very basic things so i will quickly get these done so we are requiring express we are requiring mongoose and this is require okay here require mongoose and then const passport because we need this for the authentication maybe we can add these additional modules later first we will set up our folder structure and all and now all the other required modules uh, body parser let's say and uh, so we will require body parser that we can add and then we can start uh, registering these middlewares so const app i'm always lazy when i write express because this is something which hasn't changed since last 10 years app.use now let, let now you don't need to actually use the body parser in this way you can just use i think express.json with the latest uh, version of uh, express so we have body parser and you need to just register the body parser middleware so this is url and code and in this you can pass extended false okay and then another middleware app.use body parser.json and so we are going to write something for the database like how to initialize the connection okay and we are using passport so how to initialize the passport what you will do is app.use and the passport.initialize okay and then for now we can just start the server we can get the port from process.env otherwise we will start it on by default 5000 port and then app.lation to this port and this is the callback this is this is some code which haven't changed since long time this is how we are creating a simple express http server for rest apis server is up and running on port and this is my port okay now we have to register the routes controllers and all i mean we have to import them now because we are talking about mongodb a lot here so what we need to do is we need to think about how we can define all these different models let's say we have a user model we have the restaurant model order model and the meals okay and we also need to register all these routes so here uh, we will get, we will import the routes from restaurant order meals auth and user so first first of all we'll start defining the models let's say user.model.js so how we define it 
we get the mongoose and then we get the schema right and then let's say const user const user schema equal to new and we are writing we are not writing typescript so we don't need to worry about types here and i will just define okay name should be of type and it takes an object type is string s should be capital okay and it is required true or false all these attributes you can pass similarly we have an email password so i will just copy this and i will reuse this name email which is a type string password and the role because the role can be two different roles one who is managing the restaurant the, the manager of the restaurant and another is just a default user like us who is just placing the order and buying food online required is true and the default role I mean what should be the default value if it is not being passed it's user and then date it can be created date updated date and all so when you are creating a user this is type date and default is date dot now okay so we have created a user schema let's create a model from this and we can also export that module.export equal to user const user equal to mongoose dot model and here we need to pass this uh, model name which is user and it is pointing to user schema and then we can actually export this module.exports user okay same thing we have to do is we have to do it uh, everywhere okay we will just save it now same thing we have to do for other models let's say order models meals model and restaurant so uh, let's talk about the restaurant here we are going to create the same set of files index.js uh, restaurant.controller.js and then restaurant.model.js this video is going to be a little lengthy because I'm covering everything in this default video so this is a restaurant model now restaurant model will be we we'll just change things here this is a restaurant schema okay from user schema it becomes restaurant schema so this is restaurant now what we are going to have name is fine the name of the restaurant the type means is it north indian south indian or different kind of food uh, italian russian some kind of food type description description may be required true and then we are going to have a relationship here with the meals because this restaurant is going to hold the meals and it is going to have a one to many kind of relationship because one restaurant can have multiple meals uh, registered right so type is uh, type is schema dot object id and it we also provide the reference the reference here is that we are going to create the meal collection okay so i think this is our meals and then restaurant schema and uh, this is restaurant and now we can create a simple meal collection 
so i will create a meal collections and the order collection uh, this is meal uh, let's call it as a meal dot model dot js okay there we are going to have meal is simple uh, what do we have in the meal is just a couple of attributes like name price and description okay this is low level entity and this will become meal schema so after this our reference will work properly because now we have meal collection that we have referred inside a restaurant okay now let's talk about order.model.js this will be a little different because in order we wanted to associate a lot of other information related to the order which is like restaurant the user and the meals so inside order.model.js uh, what is the total amount all these information about the order this is order schema so inside order we have a total amount what is the status of order total amount is type is number I mean how much money you need to pay status is string status is string require true and the default what should be the status is order is placed All right and then created at is we can have now the important part is if there is any note you wanted to add with the order which is required false like you wanted to put some comment about particular order item so here we are going to have meals because order will be associated with the meals so it's a like same thing it will have an array and then we are going to have another thing is the user like uh, and user is just an object because that's this order belongs to a single user schema dot object id and the reference for this will be a user and after this we are going to have a reference with the restaurant and with restaurant it will be a single uh, we are just thinking okay you are not placing the order from multiple restaurant a single order can have an order from a single restaurant and reference is because we are just understanding the structure understanding the relationships it can be as complex as you want like uber eats or swiggy clone or something like that you can build so these are multiple models right and now we just need to expose the apis from these models we will uh, we will say we will insert we will update we will delete because the meal model i mean the meal controller will be a simple crud operation meal.controller.js and we can expose the routes from index.js it will be a simple crud create meal update meal delete meal and then the restaurant restaurants because we need to associate a meal to a particular restaurant so let's create order.controller dot js and then index dot js okay uh, let's create uh, now these all the components in the auth we are going to have a particular service so we can start with the user controller user model and the user router so it's like same express application so what we are doing is we can first create a user router and we are going to define two different routes we already we also going to create controller and from router we are going to call the controller methods so require and here we will require user.controller so this controller will define the methods for the user apis and here we will get the express router and uh, const router equal to express dot router
And on this router, we can define on this router we can define our routes router dot get. Let's say first is the get user and controller dot show is some method we are going to create and then router dot post. Let's say I have another method register and it is going to call controller dot register method. And then we have I have a login method and it is going to call login method and we have to export this router. So I can use this router there. Okay, there was a typo. Okay, it looks fine now. So same kind of uh, router we are going to define everywhere. It just like our root path will be different. So after defining, uh, after defining all the routes, we can start creating the controllers. So in the first place, we are creating user controller and inside user controller, we have two different methods. Okay. So I can just start defining them. Module exports dot login. And it is going to be a sync, a sync method request response and next. So this is our first method, then we have a register. So initially I'm writing the minimum, the bare bone structure of the APIs, then we can enhance them. Okay. So what we are going to do is let's say we are getting all the parameters from the request body. Let's say we are writing a uh, register first. So here we can validate the payload uh, using joy or class validator or some other module okay so here we are getting all the attributes from the request body and what we can do is first we will check do we have this user already available in the system so i'm using a sync await user what we can do is user dot find one and find based on particular criteria what we are passing is email do we have this user already available so what we can do is if user is there that means you have already created this user and we will not allow you to create this user again and you can simply say is email already exists if everything is good we didn't find a user so we can start preparing for creating a new user const user equal to new and this is how we create a user in the mongodb model here you create the instance of the user model and pass all the attributes. So what do we have is inside user we have a name, email, password and the role I think all are these attributes and we can just pass them one by one. So we got the user object. Okay. Now what, what is left is user.save. Before that I think we should generate the hash. Here we can just change this name existing user. So we have to generate hash for that we will be using bcrypt library. Bcrypt JS library which will help us to create a hash of the password because we are not going to store the password as it is. So it provides one method bcrypt dot hash. So first of all, we need to get the hash of this password. So here we can just pass the, the new user dot password. And some string salt value. And does it support the promise? Let's see. If it is supporting the promise, then we can do a sync. See if it is going to return as the value. And then what we can do is user dot password equal to the hash password. And then we can simply save the password. 
save the user and await uh, this user dot save that's it so we can wrap the whole thing into a try catch just in case if any error occurred we should be able to capture that inside try catch and here i can say if we are able to get the user object so i can say const saved user and i will say response dot status 201 dot json uh, i can say saved user so we have to return 500 okay so this is simple register so similarly we can define the logic for our login we didn't test it we are thinking it is it will work as it is so inside login let's say we got these things or we can also do the validation first before even acting on the payload we are getting email and the password and then we can start writing const user equal to user dot find one and here the criteria is the email let's say if we are able to find the user first of all the the negative scenario if user didn't we are not able to find a user then obviously it is going to be 404 user is not available right otherwise we are good we got the match so now we can start comparing the password uh, let's say we are going to use the bcrypt library again and we are going to compare the saved password against the password we are getting in the payload so bcrypt dot compare uh, we need to check if this method returns the promise yes it, it is returning a promise boolean so this is good for us we can just pass the password coming from the payload and the user password right so it is going to return this boolean flag if match found right if match found if match not found there are two different scenarios first of all if match found then what we can simply say is do this otherwise in the else part we can simply say his password is incorrect right if match found then obviously we can generate some kind of a token and we are already inside a login so we can say const payload equal to id it's a json object we are creating user dot id and the name user dot name and we can use gwt dot sign method so we need gwt from json web token library i mean it's like a simple microservice we are writing and we have written this kind of a code a lot many times so i'm not focusing much on explaining the concepts it's like you validated the email then the password match is found what is the next step is generating the token and sending to the logged in user okay so there are we have these two methods register and the login so here i think to, 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 to await i can just do jwt dot sign this is also a promise method here you can pass payload the arguments are payload and the secret keys I think let's see the method signature. This intelligence is not working, but it takes payload and then uh, the secret key. Let's say key, secret key, and then the expires in. Here you can pass the milliseconds. Let's say I'm saying is uh, thirty-six thousand 
is the millisecond. So this will give me the token, const token and what I can do is, I can simply say is response dot status okay we are able to log in 200 dot json and we can draft an object okay success is true we are not using nest js or something and the token token is token that's it let's uh, test the user login and the sign up and then we will proceed further Meanwhile, we will also set up uh, the basic startup script and we will plug this router in the server.js. Okay. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to start testing, start running the MongoDB. Okay, and I can just do docker compose up. <coughs> It should start uh, the MongoDB and the Postgres container and you can see my docker is running there. Okay, meanwhile we can just uh, create a script, start script. And inside this I can simply say is okay start my application and it's node server.js looks like everything is good we can hide these warnings and then start the application so we'll just test it if it is going to work fine we added the mongodb here in the server.js mongoose.connect everything we are getting from process.env because we are using .env module and i have populated these values inside .env you can see mongo uri secret one key anything process.env dot so same i can use inside user controller like while doing register or while doing login while generating the token if you wanted to use something from the process.env now i can just do npm run start and let's see if it is going to work node server.js so if you go to our server.js mongodb warning some deprecation warning that should be fine and our application is running on 5000 port and here we have registered the user routes you can see app.use api user will point to the user's route so we can start using it okay so let's see both the the login and the register apis and then the the next important part is, is understanding you are able to register you are able to log in you will receive a token and then you will start accessing the actual apis the meal api order and the restaurant apis so we are going to use passport local strategy what that will do is it will actually decode the the authorization token which you are sending and it will extract the payload it will first verify if your token is valid then it will decode and it will give you the id and based on the id we are going to make a call to the database and we will extract the user and put the user or serialize the user in the request object so any route meal route uh, order route or restaurant route you will be able to access who is the current logged in user because these routes are private routes not a public one so now let's test our apis okay so we have a login and register apis so this is our register API and we can use the node mode instead of using this script. So I will use node mode and I will do npm run start. 
node mode will restart automatically if there is an area any error or whenever we change any particular file so that is going to help us in debugging and we don't know if this code is going to work so let's see we have written i think comfortably it should run okay internal server error and why it is saying that let's see go to the register method and try catch we can just try to add some logging maybe a winston logging and here we can return response dot status 201 dot send saved user this user we are saving are we getting the hash password i just need to check few things okay and this existing user and the login i mean i'm not doing any validations i'm not doing any exception handling all those things are add-on here our target is to learn mongoose so user user is able to log in now the, now the next thing is you should start using this token somehow in the your authorization header and you start accessing the apis so important apis are here is okay creating the restaurant adding the meals creating the order attaching the order with the restaurant meals and user okay so now we can start writing the other apis let's say the meal order and the restaurant before that now user is logged in user will start sending this token in the authorization header so we need some mechanism to validate the token decode the token and extract user from it so we are already using passport local strategy right so we will write a passport.js file here and that file will contains nothing but a, log a logic how we handle the local strategy module.exports and here we are going to access the passport library and through this library we are going to register a middleware passport.use and here we can pass the different strategy i guess uh x new zwt strategy okay let's require these strategies first const zwt zwt strategy that we can get from passport zwt so there are two things we need we need a mechanism to extract the the header extract the token from the header and uh, and the strategy name which is GWT strategy so we got both the things and here we are creating new GWT strategy and it requires couple of argument the options and the callback so callback will be GWT decode payload once it is able to uh, decode the payload and then the callback this is all passport thing now here what we can do is user dot find so we are going to use a sync await uh, let's see if this is suitable here we have to import the the user model const user equal to require because in Node.js a lot of things are callback based and you always need to find a way how you can use async await there user.model we got the instance of user so decode payload here what it is giving you it is giving you the the whatever the token you are passing in the authorization header it is giving you that ok and in the options we are going to define the, the mechanism to get the extraction of token from the headers options.jwt i think i need to check the document like what is the way to extract the header so it is jwt uh, from request object and this we are going to get from express jwt 
एक्स एट जी डब्ल्यू टी डॉट इट शुड प्रोवाइड फ्रॉम ऑथराइजेशन एस बी एर टोकन सो यू डोंट नीड टू स्पेसिफाई वॉट यू नीड टू डू इज इन योर हैडर यू आर गोइंग टू सेंड ऑथराइजेशन समथिंग लाइक दैट एंड इट इज एबल टू कैप्चर द टोकन फ्रॉम देयर राइट एंड देन अनदर आर्ग्यूमेंट वी नीड इज ऑप्शन डॉट सीक्रेट की secret or key uh, we already have it in the process dot env dot secret or key and we are passing this and we are passing this options in the gwt strategy if everything is done here first we will get the the user object so we are using await user dot find user dot find by id because we already have the id in the payload of the jwt because while doing the sign up while while doing the login we are sending two things in the token uh, one is the id another is the name so this is the id if we are able to find a user find by id if we got the user object then we can return because this is a callback again return done with uh, null as an error and the user object if we didn't get it then return done as a callback and if we got an error otherwise null and the false we didn't get the user now we need to see how we can make it async jwt strategy async it will error we will just return the the error callback because we need to return this done as a callback so here it is a user uh, error object is there and this user is null okay and then we can start using this jwt strategy in our application so we have to register it in the server.js file in server.js we got i think the password and password object we need to call there is a function it is providing we have to call this password function okay going to the server.js and here i can do that first of all require this particular module and this module is inside keep passport the pa we have to pass the passport object yeah that's it so now it should be able to initialize the passport so whenever the request is going with the authorization header it should be able to decode and we'll try to find the real user and then internally this passport is doing all those things it is putting this user object in the request object okay so let's test that if it is happening and what we will we have to do for that is we have to register we have already registered the passport now we can start writing the controllers and the routers for the meal order and the restaurant now let's see uh, how we can use this uh, passport strategy jwt strategy to decode the token and extract the user from it so we have already written it so this is the strategy here we are getting the payload and here we are able to get the user now how we are using it that is a different thing so for that uh, we can go to our server.js and here if you can see we have initialized the passport and the second step is to call this function okay but after that uh, what i want to do is i have a login user and register user and i also want to get the logged in user using this api endpoint api users so i have to call this middleware passport.authenticate through the jwt so what this middleware will do it this middleware is a predefined middleware it will call our jwt strategy which we have written and it is going to call this thing 
it will decode the payload it will accept the user and it will put the user in the request object that's why you can see we are able to get the request.user so this passport is putting your user object in the request request.user and inside user controller we are able to access the request.user.id okay so let's see if i try to hit this endpoint it will use the local strategy and you can see what we are getting after i am passing the token in the authorization header so i got the decode payload from the passport strategy and i got the user object it's using request.user and this is what it is returning i'm again validating okay whatever is the user in the payload is it the valid user so same way you can actually write the code now because this middleware is required everywhere we have to use it in, on all protected routes so that we can access we can get the current logged in user in the protected routes and you can also compose another middleware what that middleware will do is okay if request.user is not there that means user is not logged in you should not allow user to access uh, the platform so we can also have another route is authenticated this route we can add on all the root level routes of uh, meals orders in the restaurant okay uh, let's see that in the next video.